One of the guys who worked at this college I was at um, said to me, you know, what I've always wanted to be is an agent. It's a very odd ambition. I know, it is a strange, <laughs> a strange ambition. Um, yeah, I want to be blamed for everything and uh, <laughs> despised by outsiders. Um, and a lot of people had said to me, you should be a comedian, you should right. be a comedian, because there's two types of comedians. Comedians who are very funny on stage, and you meet them and think, how did it ever even occur to you mm. to do comedy? Because you, you seem almost anti-comedy mm. in company. And then with me, I was cons I mean, I was much worse than I am now, because now I have some sort of n natural outlet for it. But I would, you know, I would go around someone's house, I'd be doing prop comedy with stuff on the table and, you know, rattling off anecdotes and stuff. And, and, uh, and so he said, look, well, we can help each other and I'll be, I'll be your agent and you can be a comic. So I started writing down some of the things I'd said in the pub and stuff like that. And um, what also... What was the first I'd, gig? What was the what? Well, I'd been to Edinburgh right. in a play where I played a, a, a hard-nosed Cockney copper interrogating an IRA suspect. Blimey. And... Um, while I was up there, I went and saw some of this new comedy that mm. people were talking about, this alternative comedy, which I'd, I know I'd, I'd never seen any of that in Birmingham. And I thought, yeah, actually, I do really, really want to do this. So I got back and I phoned one of the venues and I said, I'd like to book a room for next year's festival. And I drew out my life savings, which was 420 quid, and I paid for two weeks at the Edinburgh Festival before I set foot on stage as a stand-up comedian so i had i had the the gig lined up and I, I remember actually thinking at one point i don't i don't know if i need to do any stuff before i can just go and then um my <laughs> agent said i'd be good to do a couple of things just tonight and of course i tried it and as with most comics it was you know nightmare marishly horrible because and, because um, people didn't laugh. Right. And I did a New Year's Eve um, thing for the Birmingham Anglers Association. And they were each given uh, small trumpets to blow. Um, for, uh, f I mean, the idea that was they'd blow them at midnight, but they blew them at me and I left. It was like, you know, being... Uh, King Harold arriving at court. They were all <laughs> blowing. The, I looked into the wings and there was my agent and the DJ from the club going. Um, so I had a few of those and that was horrible. And of course, most people would think, well, I, I can't live with no, this. Well, it's exactly. Unbearable. But of course, I'd booked this room so the next set in You can't get your money back. I'm not going to let 400 quid go down the toilet. So I kept going and then basically you got two choices, you know, you, you, you get better or you get out. So I decided to get better.